Hello. In this video, I want to compare population distributions and sampling distributions for a yes-no trait and a numerical trait. So, previously in another video, I had compared sampling distributions, and essentially that was really because we want to know how samples behave. And in a sampling distribution, here, for example, you have a yes-no trait you're going to use a percent or a proportion to measure that yes-no trait. And so you take samples, and those samples are called, are called sample proportions. And so they pile up around the mean p in a normal distribution and spread out by this standard deviation, square root of p times 1 minus p over n, and again, 1 minus p can be q. And then for a numerical trait, uh, we have sample means, which could either be x-bar or y-bar. Our calculator uses x-bar, some other books use x-bar, our book uses y-bar. But it really doesn't matter whether it was an x or a y value. Essentially, you're averaging those x values and it would be an x-bar, or you're averaging the y values and it becomes a y-bar. So we'll go along with your book. So the sample means, the y-bars, will pile up around mu in a normal distribution and spread out by this standard deviation formula, sigma over square to n. And all this holds as long as conditions are met. And by conditions, we talked briefly, but you have independence, which is really the same for both of them. 10% rule, which is exactly the same for both of them. Randomization, exactly the same for both of them. The only place where they differ is in showing that the sample size is large enough. So for a yes-no trait, put that up here, versus a numerical trait. For a yes-no trait, you have to show 10 yeses and 10 nos occurring in your sample for that sample size. And for a numerical trait, you either have to have a sample size of 30 or more. That's what our book states. Some books, states some books state 25, so you've got to be in that ballpark. Or you have to know the population is normally distributed. This is really the only condition in which they differ. That is it. So this is called success failure, right, or central limit, and, you know. So... Here, then, let's take a little bit broader comparison. So what I want to do now, since that was just sampling distributions, I want to look at population and sampling distributions. All right, so I've made this comparative chart here. For a yes-no trait, it's impossible to have a population distribution. And by the way, a population distribution is always when your sample size is 1. You're taking values one at a time. Your values then here are yes, no's. So for example, let's say we take a look at the trait blue eyes. Does someone have blue eyes or not? Well, you look at a person, you look at their eyes, and you see whether they're blue or not. And for that one person, you write down the value y for yes or n for no. That's it. So if you were to try to make piles of your individual values, you would just have two piles. They wouldn't be numbers, so it wouldn't matter what order you put them in. That's just not a histogram. We can't work with it. So essentially, a population distribution was impossible for a yes-no trait. Never happened. So what we did instead is we had to have sample sizes that were greater than 1, and then what we did is we divided, right, for a sample proportion essentially was the number of people in a sample that had the trait divided by the total number of people, or the sample size n. So we created sample proportions, and then we talked about sampling distribution for a uh, yes-no trait. So that, really, is this right here. Okay. Now, for a numerical trait, it is possible to have both a population distribution and a sampling distribution. So if the sample size is 1, you can take the values one at a time and basically just immediately put those values into piles. The center of that distribution will be mu, and the standard deviation will be sigma. And it, it just depends on whether you call the values x's or y's. You'd say standard deviation of y or standard deviation x. And then for a sampling distribution, it means that your sample size is anything greater than 1. It could be 2 or 500 or 5 billion. But in that case, again, your, uh, as long as conditions are met, your mean is mu, and then your standard deviation, if the original values were called y's, then the standard deviation of the y bars is sigma over square to n.
or if your original values were called x's, the standard deviation of the x bars is still sigma over squared n. It's the same formula. But again, for these, for this to hold, meaning that we have we know that these formulas hold and that you have a normal distribution, you have to have conditions met. Now, when you're calculating, oh actually let me go ahead and go into the interpretation just so you kind of get an idea of this. So for the yes no trait, let's suppose we are talking about blue eyes, and let's say we're looking at the population of males, and let's say we know 17% of all males have blue eyes, and we start taking samples of size 300. Well, if you calculate the standard deviation, which is the square root of p times 1 minus p over n, you'll get this, which we round to 0.02, so I've drawn the distribution here, but how you would interpret this is that 68% of all sample proportions will have between 15 and 19% males with blue eyes, understood in those samples, and then so on and so forth with the empirical rule, 95, 99.7. Now, so that's this. So for a yes-no trait, these are the only interpretations that are possible. Right? Now, um, for a numerical trait, you could have either n equal 1 or n greater than 1. So if n is 1, let's suppose we take the numerical trait height, and population is males, and we know that the average height of all males is 70, standard deviation is 4, then here's your population distribution, and you'd say 68% of all males, your population, right? not samples, because we're really not averaging, we're just taking males one at a time. We take their height and immediately put it in a pile. So 68% of all males will have a height between 66 and 74 inches, and then 94% of all males will have a height between 62 and 78, and so on and so forth. To contrast that with here, what would it look like for the sampling distribution, where you have more than one male in a sample? Well, let's suppose we're taking 33 males and averaging them. So our standard deviation now is going to be sigma over square root of n, which I rounded to about 0.7. So here's your distribution. So now your interpretation is 68% of all sample means or sample averages or samples will have an average. But basically you have to have the word sample and the word average in there. So 68% of all sample means will have an average height of between 69.3 and 70.7 .7 for the th 33 men. And so on and so forth using the empirical rule. Okay. So that corresponds to this. Now, when you go to find probabilities outside of the empirical rule, right? the empirical rule only applies to whole number standard deviations from the mean, then of course you have to use z score normal CDF. So anytime you see the word probability, like what's the probability of getting, in this case, a particular sample proportion, here uh, getting a specific um, height, right, and then here a, a specific sample mean, you always have to find first a z, the z scores and then take the normal CDF to find the area under the curve. Well, the z score essentially has this form. It's whatever value you're talking about that created these piles, how far it is from the mean, right, divided by that particular standard deviation. So for if I have a yes-no trait, since the only thing that's possible is a sampling distribution, my z-score has to be p hat because that's what my values are. Remember, I made piles of p hats. Those are my values. So how far is a p hat, which is my value, from p, the mean, divided by the standard deviation. This is the standard deviation for that particular distribution. Now if we're talking about a numerical trait, and here we're talking about finding a z-score, it's the value minus the mean of the standard deviation. In our case, it's either an x or y, which would be the specific height. How, how tall is a specific man? How far is that height from the mean divided by sigma? All right. And then if you talk about sampling distribution, here, a sample value is going to be a, a y bar, or a value is going to be a sample mean or a y bar, or an x bar, depending on if you call it that. So you're saying then how far is a particular x bar, or y, x bar or y bar from the mean mu divided by the standard deviation, sigma squared n. So essentially that's how you find, use your, it's the same basic format though, right? If, if you see that it's the same form, it's always whatever value for that specific distribution, how far that value is from the mean over that standard deviation for that distribution, then you see that there's really, there are common, it's a common formula, all right?
So, and then let me just kind of touch on here. So anytime you need to find probability, you're essentially finding z-scores in normal CDF. So the z-scores we just talked about, the normal CDF, there's really only three possible areas that you would have. You'd either have less than a particular value, between two values, or above a value. Those are the only three scenarios you have. Now, it doesn't matter where that value is. I drew this value here, but it could have been all the way over here or here. It doesn't matter. Any area to the left, because you're talking about less than, you're saying then I want all the area or all the piles from negative infinity to that value. So you change negative infinity, you represent as negative 100 standard deviations, and then you find the z-score for that value. And that z-score is, well, it depends on which distribution we're talking about. And then the normal CDF would be from negative 100 to that z-score. If you're between two values, you find the z-score for the first value, the z-score for the second value, find the normal CDF from z1 to z2. And if you're above a certain value, it's uh, z score to 100 standard deviations, so normal CDF from z to 100. Do not use the z tables. It's so much easier to use your calculator in normal CDF. Okay, and so this is the general overview for what we did. And the only last comment I want to make is, although I draw all these distributions as if they're the same, here where I had the numerical trait right and this is these are males one at a time you're not given a sample size when you're not given a sample size you can assume n equals one and that's the population distribution so here I drew it this way and I drew this one very much the similar way but honestly this is how they would really look <laughs> right because of the averaging effect the y bars pile up much more closely uh, in the mean whereas the population distribution is much more spread out. All right. Thanks so much for listening.